I've been a high school coach for 12 years. I played college football at UC Davis, Phil Aggies. And um, unfortunately, my FNL team, my only season, went one and seven. So, really, it doesn't matter what you know, it's about the Jimmies and the Jokes. Uh, and it doesn't matter uh, what the record was. Uh, the most important thing is that they're always hearing, good job, how can they get better, that you're treating them with respect, you're giving them opportunities. Nobody will care about what your record was at the end. They will care about the experiences, they will care about the friendships they made, and they will ultimately look to you as a source of confidence and an inspiration. And those that's really why we're all here. So um, I will let Coach Mack uh, talk a little bit about the origin of Friday Night Lights and give just a brief history and then kind of how we got here and then um, we'll, we'll go from there. So real quick, I'm, I'm Coach Mack. It's, it's easy to remember my name just by that. Um, I'm a, I'm a Carlsbad native, went, went to uh, all the elementary schools and all that through Carlsbad, played Pop Warner in Carlsbad and played at the high school. I met my wife at Carlsbad High, so we're kind of engrossed in this uh, community. We have three kids, I'll have a freshman at Carlsbad, and then a seventh grader and a fifth grader. So, uh, Coach Pub and I, I got to coach uh, Coach Pub in high school up at Los Alamitos, he's one of our best players. Uh, of that kind of historic program, a great player there, and, and uh, um, we, we, we formed a, a strong friendship. And then uh, he came and coached with me at uh, Lakewood High. Um, and then when the Carlsbad job came available, I was able to get it, and then uh, I'm a pretty good recruiter, so I want to recruit some great talent. I said, he just was newly married, come down to Carlsbad, it's the best city in the world, and uh, coach football, and, and um, let's start our own Friday Night Lights. It started in Los Alamitos, there's how many now? Total? 17. 17 FNLs. Um, we're not the owners of FNL, uh, we, we, uh, this is, we run this franchise. Okay, so um, we started with uh, about 450 kids. And, and we were excited about those 450 as far as there being a need and a want. We just, you know, there was really nothing when I got here, there was just nothing that we saw that um, had that. And uh, when we were in Orange County where it started, it was such a great product. My kids started playing it up there. My, my young son started uh, kindergarten. My older son, sorry. Uh, he was in kindergarten up there. And I saw the organization. I saw how positive it was. I saw what it did for the community. And I thought, you know, down here in uh, our, our home turf, this would be a great deal. So now, um, you know, it, it's, it's uh, just overwhelming blessing of what the what the league has done. Um, we have we'll have two thousand kids in this next uh, uh, season. We have about two thousand per season. We think we could have more. Uh, it's just that uh, we get regulated with our fields. Um, that's always the battle in Carlsbad um, is is trying to find field space. And we've made some great inroads with the district and with uh, the city. And so we're very thankful of that. Because what happens is, this is soccer nation in this area, really in Southern California. But, and so the soccer, they kind of own the fields. They have first priority. So we're, we're second or third a lot of times. But because of the size of our league and because the way we run the league and how positive it is for our community, we've made some great strides with getting the fields that really help us. Um, but the foundation of why we're successful is you guys right here. Um, we, we, we have great dads and, and sometimes moms that volunteer, uh, take on a team and who've never coached flag football or anything, and they say, yeah, we need to, I'll, I'll do it. And then instead of worrying about their egos and, and getting crazy on a Friday night, um, they make sure that the, uh, those eight kids that they get to coach have a positive experience. And 99.9%, and .9 that's what happens. Um, and, and I'm here to kind of always be the reality check of why you're doing this. If you want your name in the paper and all that, you know, come coach high school with me and, and we could, even then you won't get, unless you're the head guy, you're not gonna get blamed for it. Uh, but no, your name won't be in the paper on Saturday. So, you know, um, you just wanna have fun and enjoy it. Um, and your competitive juices will come out for sure, but always remember those eight little kids uh, looking at you as, as Coach Pub says, like, you know, they're gonna remember their coach and FNL, they're gonna remember their experience. 
Um, sometimes you remember the record and sometimes I don't. You know, you think about your kids and everything they do nowadays. Um, there's so many games. They're oversaturated with games. So it, it's, it's more about the experience than the wins and losses. Thanks, Coach Mac. Um, Coach Mac's wonderful wife has a few words she wants to say about the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation, which is a really cool award. And uh, I'll let Kelly Mac take over. that helps families in our area who have kids um, with life-threatening illnesses. And so what we do is we put it out to you coaches. Um, we ask that you find a kid on your team who's exceptional, not necessarily meaning the fastest kid on your team, but exceptional in some other way, whether it's leadership qualities, overcome something, you know, whatever you guys find amongst your players. Um, and then if you nominate them, we read the applications and we um, give out some awards a little later in the season in October. Um, we're, I'm gonna send out a video in a couple weeks here. It's only a minute and a half. And I think last year, the first time that we did it, we didn't get a ton of people um, nominating a kid. I think because most people didn't really understand exactly what it was. So I asked when the video comes out to you coaches, please watch it, it's like a minute and a half. You'll be touched. It's really, really cool to receive this award, it's an honor. And we're trying to make a big deal out of it. We're hoping to maybe on a Thursday night get all the nominees together and we'll announce the winners and um, the we'll honor to receive. So anyway, just uh, keep that in the back of your head when you get that email that comes through about Mitchell Thorpe Foundation for your players to nominate someone. Thank you very much, Kelly. And um, we've got seats in the front, too. Lots of seats up here. Lots of seats up here. If you have back problems, by all means, stand. I get it. Um, it you, you, you're better off sitting. Um, your chances of being made fun of increase exponentially if you're standing. I'm just going to throw that out there. That's true. Um, now, you know, the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation is a big deal. A couple of the other things that we get to do in the city of Carlsbad and for the local communities is we get to donate money to schools that need athletic equipment. We get to do a scholarship for uh, a college senior, or excuse me, an incoming freshman to college. Um, we donate money. We, we raise almost five thousand dollars last year with our boys and girls club benefit golf tournament and that is just fnl coaches everybody playing in a scramble a bunch of four zones and at the end meeting at the 19th hole doing a little bit of an auction nothing major there's no dinner uh but all the proceeds go to the across that boys and girls club over the last few years they've been raised like 12 13 000 bucks um you know at the heart of this is we wanted more kids playing football number one when we when we moved down here we kind of felt like six, seven years ago, there weren't enough kids playing football. Football got a bad rap. Uh, and Coach Mack had grown up playing Pop Warner and played college football and had a great career at Carlsbad and all that. Uh, but I had never played tackle football until I got to high school. And I think that uh, my mommy um, was a petroleum engineer and just never uh, never wanted me running into people. Uh, and then when I got to be a freshman, she said, okay, you can do it. You get like a 3.0 GPA. And so um, that was like one of the best things. So I'd always encourage you guys to set goals for your kids, and if they want to do things, you know, I'm not here to lecture you, but that's my little story. Um, okay, so tonight, we're gonna go over the rules, we're gonna go over like the coach's cheat sheet, we're gonna go over ways to be successful, but the big thing I want you to get out of tonight is share the football and be a good human, okay? Now when I say being a good human, you're gonna see some bad humans out there on Friday. Like, not everybody, the odds are, somebody in this room is not gonna be a good human on Friday. <laughs> Uh, and that will mean you're yelling at refs. That will mean you're, you, one of your parents is, is talking smack to the other coach and you don't put a stop to it. That will mean one of your players throws a football at a ref. Uh, you know, that will mean that something happens that you don't handle appropriately. So tonight, make sure you get two things out of this. Make sure you're spreading the football around, no matter how good or how bad your team is or your players. And make sure that you're a good human. And, and, and those are really important things tonight. Um, we've had other themes throughout the years, like don't be weird, but tonight um, we're going to go with uh, be a good human. Um, Coach Mack, um, I'm going to go over the coach's cheat sheet, and this is something I made in order for everybody to be successful, uh, just for new coaches. And then we're also going to go over the rules, and Coach Mack will do that. Um, the rules can be like really labor intensive and kind of in the weeds, but you know there's a reason why we kind of go over it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to point you to is the coach's cheat sheet. Thank you, sir. And it says Friday Night Lights, Coach's Cheat Sheet. You wanna 
most of you are really curious, when do I get my rosters? We're gonna start with that. You're gonna get your rosters maybe Friday or Saturday. We have had such a hard time finding volunteer coaches this season, uh, more so than ever. We have 239, 240 different teams now. Um, so that means we have 240 different parents volunteering, and that's hard. We all are very busy people, and I get that. Um, but it's just one of those things that it's taken us a little while to get enough volunteers, and once we have enough volunteers, then we can form teams, and we're still really under construction. Um, so your rosters hopefully will get to you by Friday or Saturday, but that's really not your roster. That's like your sneak peek at your roster. That's your roster, and you're going to look at it, and all you're going to do is look at, do I have my son, my daughter on my team? And, or my stepson, my stepdaughter, whatever. And if you had a request that you wanted, like, you know, person X who has like a big trampoline in their backyard and you didn't get them, I'm sorry. Just make sure that your player or daughter, your son or daughter is on your team. Then by Sunday or Monday, maybe Tuesday the latest, you'll get the final rosters. And you'll know they're the final rosters because the subject of the email is going to say final rosters. So that's, and that is when you can start contacting your players. It will have contact info on there. It'll be super easy. Okay, but once you get your players, once you get your, your roster, um, it's on an Excel, and if you know what Excel is, there's different tabs. So if you're one of those people that's not familiar with Excel, watch a YouTube video on Excel, because there's different tabs, and if you call me, you're like, hey, I don't have the contact info for my, for my players, I'm gonna say, did you look at the bottom left of the screen? There's a different tab, it says contact info. Press that one, you're like, oh, okay, all right. So you're gonna call them or email them right away, and you're gonna say, hey, my name is Coach Paul, I, I'm lucky enough to be your coach for flag football. Um, you know, we're gonna have our first practice this week on Wednesday. Look forward to meeting you. Secondly, if you can't reach a particular player, email us, call us, preferably email, because once we're in front of our computer, we can look up parent contact info really quickly. But just email us, we'll make, we'll, we'll make sure you get it. We have more contact info than, than we give you. Um, then you wanna let the parents know that, hey, we, we, we have the option of buying shorts. The shorts are optional and they match your jersey. You can pick the colors. You can color coordinate and do your thing. And the shorts have no pockets. So when you play FNL, you cannot wear shorts with pockets. We've had, I'd say, a handful of players who have broken pinkies because they, they grabbed somebody's flag during practice and they dislocated their finger or broke their pinky or broke their ring finger. And we've had, I think, 25 coaches who've had broken pinkies because they've also done that uh, in practice and they're messing around with kids. So coaches, players, make sure you guys protect yourselves, make sure nobody wears shorts uh, with pockets. And we offer FNL shorts that you can, there's a form in here, you simply bring the form August 2nd, which will be a, a theme tonight, you'll hear that. Bring those shorts, bring that short order form, and you bring money, and you turn it in August 2nd. And I believe we're doing it at North Coast Calvary this year. Uh, and that information is on your shorts order form. Um, and then make sure you let the parents know about the sponsor fee. The sponsor fee is due August 16th. And make sure everybody knows, hey guys, we're gonna all have to pay $32.50 to get our jerseys, or we can get a local business, a barbershop, a dentist, a chiropractor, it doesn't matter. And get somebody to donate $260 to Friday Night Lights, and you will not have to pay anything. That doctor, dentist, barber will get mentioned on our website and also get a plaque with a team photo. So at the end of the season, you're, you can have like a silly photo or like a really serious photo, whatever you want. And it says like, thank you to Rob Cohen, awesome chiropractor, he's here. Uh, Rob Cohen, awesome chiropractor, uh, you know, thank you for your support. And it's tax deductible. So it's a tax deductible donation because we are a 501c3. Um, number six, turn in your sponsor form along with the money, you get that. Okay, what do good coaches do? Four things, they give the ball to every player twice per half. At the end of, or every week, they send, at least send one email that's positive about everybody. Like, hey guys, we had a really good game, uh, the score doesn't matter, we had great fruit snacks after the game, really had fun at Pizza Port, um, you know, really loved our camaraderie. I actually put an example email of what to send in here and you can read it and it gives you an idea. You basically highlight every player just in a really nice way. Even if it's snappy, maybe it's flag pulling. Maybe it's just like a genuinely positive smile that made you happy to be coaching. Whatever it is, find something to compliment. Uh, also, number three, you want to communicate with the league when you have questions. Uh, if you have like a general question, my job, I drive a lot for my job. My cell phone's on there, just call me. I'm always driving. 
Um, if you have something you're like, hey, I need contact info or something like that, I probably want to shoot an email on that. But if you want to talk about strategy or you want to talk about, hey, I'm having, I just want to pick your brain about something, call me. No worries. Um, and then number four, have fun. Nobody will remember the record as much as they will remember your positive influence. Okay, who to contact? It says general questions, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade division. That's me, Coach Pub. My cell phone and email are on there. And then for kindergarten, first and second grade, and seventh and eighth grade, Coach Matt, right here. He is your contact. Um, if you have questions about like jerseys, like gosh, I don't know what color or which color shorts we should have, talk to Millie. Her email's on there, milliefnl at gmail.com, and her cell's on there as well. If you have a question like, hey, I'd like to order some more footballs, or I'd like to buy a sweatshirt, or you know, my my one of my players lost a duffel bag last week. You want to email Kelly Mack, and that's Kelly Mack FNL at gmail.com. If you have a question about your schedule, like you know you're gonna be out of town for business, or you know you can't have any 8:30 games because you get cranky after a set, then you want to email Jim FNL at gmail.com. Now, obviously, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but if you know you're going to be out of town or something, and you and we told you we would work around your schedule to in, encourage you to coach, then simply shoot Jen an email. Now, if all of you email asking for Labor Day weekend off or asking for you know this weekend off, like obviously that's not going to happen. We have to have 90% of our teams play every week in order for the schedule to happen. I think you guys all get that. But if it's something important and it's your only request, you can make it happen. We'll try. Um, if you have referee feedback. Fill out the form and attach it and send it to us. It's a fillable PDF. That means you can download the form and type into it. And when you type into it, you can it's really like matter of fact. I think it's I think it's, I think it's the next page. And your referee feedback form has your name, it has your team name, it has what division you're, you're in, what location and field number, and the opponent. The reason why we ask all that information is if you send us an email right after your game, because I don't know, maybe your significant others in the car ride home be like, we got so S-C-R-E, you know, uh, that was a, such a bad game, uh, this is a terrible league, the referees are blah, blah, blah. So, you know, let's just wait 24 hours, and then we're going to send a referee feedback form. And we're just going to just really quickly outline matter-of-factly what the issues were. And the issues in this case, maybe like the referee um, didn't do a good job with the seven-second count. Or maybe the referee uh, let people play with, or have four downs instead of three downs. Like, they, weird things can happen. So just make sure you fill out that, give us all the information, and we track these referees. These referees are paid, and you know we have a file on every one, and we have good ones, and we have bad ones. Um, most of them are bad, um, but <laughs> but we have to track. But, but we do track them, and if there's like a barometer, if they get to like like real bad, then we fire them. Um, but we need you to fill out forms to let us know. And at the end of the season, if you send us an email saying. Uh, these referees are terrible, uh, this is a joke, what a waste of my money, then we're going to say, did you ever tell us about this referee, or did you ever tell us anything? And you go, no, but like, that doesn't help us. Like, one thing we pride ourselves on is getting better. And like, every season we try to be more and more efficient and better. And, and we try to just do a better job with the league for you guys. And we want to make things easy for the coaches. We know you're the ones donating your time. We know you're the ones communicating with parents. We know we want to make things easy for you, so please use that referee feedback form. No insults <coughs> about my weight. I gained some weight since today, kids. It is what it is. No <laughs> insults about no insults about like, hey, Coach Mack, saw your game last night. None of that. Um, just you know, just be real nice and just you know, matter of fact about it. And I'm done with the cheat sheet, Coach Mack. It's time for the dynamic, vibrant rule session. If you can get this done in 22 minutes, I will buy you an Arnold Palmer tonight. Because I know that's your favorite drink. Yes, sir. Can you just uh, remind me what you said? When do we expect to get the draft rosters and the final rosters? Preliminary rosters, I hope, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Yes. And then your final roster should come two or three days after that. So, like, you know, go to my head, I'd say Friday night at 11.59, and then Monday morning at 6.58. We're going to go... Very fast here. Uh, Coach Pub touched on something that I want to piggyback off real quick. It has to do with touching the ball, and then I'll talk about uh, your substitutions. When I coached at Finnell, I had an assistant, and that could be anybody who tally carries. So, you know, as a coach, you might forget. So you'd say, hey, Johnny's only cut, had one touch in the first half. That, 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 that would help me second half make sure he got some carries. And for sure the rotation, okay? I didn't have to think about the rotation, we just, we had a clockwork, 
Okay? So think about having somebody that, that can help you with that. It could be your wife, it could be anybody. All right? That, that's kind of important. Friday Night Lights, Fly Football is six on six, game filled with fun and action. The offensive team plays for a first down at midfield and a touchdown in the end zone. Running and passing plays are allowed, although there are no running zones at midfield and near each goal line. The defensive team covers receivers, rushes the passer, and pulls flags to make tackles. It is intended to be non-contact sport. Oh, I was hoping you were gonna do that. Um, non-contact, you guys, we have a legend within our midst, all right? <laughs> and and uh, you know, I, I recognize Carl's bad guys all the time, but um, Matt, raise your hand, Matt. Okay, so Matt was a big time linebacker at Carlsbad and a big time linebacker at Stanford, played at Stanford. He's got to see the underlying part right there, Matt? <laughs> Non-contact, okay? So that's the deal with our league. We're not hitting people, man. That, that, that's not what we're about. Um, and, and Matt had a great career at Stanford, except the Oregon stick knob. I'm just kidding. You know, so, um, but hey, non-contact, super important, okay? We, we're not in the business of getting people hurt. That's, that's just not part of the deal. Uh, the basics, a coin toss determines first possession. The offensive team takes possession of the ball at its five yard line. Coach Puff, look at, at the five yard line. That's where you're gonna start with the football. It has three plays to cross midfield for a first down. Three plays to get right there. Once a team crosses midfield, it has three plays to score a touchdown. If the offensive fails to score, the ball changes possession and the new offensive team takes over on its five yard line. So we start from the five on a change of possession, unless it's an interception. Interception will be where uh, they pull the flag. If the offensive team fails to cross midfield, possession of the ball changes and the, opposite, uh, the opposition starts its drive from its five yard line. All possession changes except interceptions start on the offensive's five yard line. Interceptions may be returned, so it's, you're not down. Like, you catch an interception, take it to the house, okay, pick six. Teams change sides after halftime. Possession changes to loser a point toss. Um, for K, one, two, and three, four grade, one coach is allowed on field per team. So that's, that's something you, you're gonna have to adjust to is K, one, two, and three, four, you can have a coach on the field, you can be in the huddle, one coach per team. Um, you get five, six, seven, eight, you gotta do it from the side, okay? And um, you can be in the huddle, um, you know, tell them exactly what to do. Uh, some of you guys are get real fancy. You got an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator. Hey, that's all good. I see. I see it all. Um, and then when you get to, you can't be in the huddle. You know, I see guys with the wristbands, <coughs> signs. You know, doing all, all this business. Um, I've even seen the big cards. You know, that that pro football and college guys. I've seen it all. Whatever works for you, have fun. It's awesome. I get a kick out of it. So it's a good deal. Uh, players and games. Teams must field a minimum of five players at all times. So you can play with five and not forfeit. Okay? Um, registered players must play for their home team. No fill-in players. Any team using a fill-in player is subject to forfeiting games and are being disqualified from postseason play. Um, most teams <coughs> consist of eight players, six on the field, with two substitutions. Okay, so... You cannot sub players. There are no, uh, there's no doing that. Okay, and we've had, we've had, we've had, we've had this problem. Not really a problem. It's only, it's actually hasn't happened very many times. But literally, you know, you can't pull the all star from Encinitas because he's a good player for the playoff. You know, you know put our jersey on. Uh, and, and and as you'll find, as you get farther in this process, coaches are going to know your roster. They're going to know who your good players are. Okay, so that's what happened when, it, when someone got called out on it. The coach knew the other team. They said, hey, he's not on that team. They told us. Like, so that, it, it was, it was uh, and th that was the theme last year. We said, that, that's being weird. That's, <laughs> honestly, being weird that you're gonna, turn, that you're gonna do that. Don't do this. Okay. I, I, I tell, that here's, that's one of my deals, like with, with my coaches and my players. I can handle a lot of things. I can't handle weird. So, you know, you get a call from me because you're being weird. We don't, we, you don't want that phone call. Um, all players must play a minimum of three out of four quarters. Everyone sits out one full quarter. 
Substitutions are only allowed at the quarter breaks unless there's an injury. So that's why we have the perfect number of eight. Everyone will sit one quarter, okay, and it's all even. Um, there are some guys who take nine. Nine, uh, does anybody in, in here have a team of nine players? Okay, so bless you, bless you guys for doing that for whatever reason you are. Um, my son, my older son, I think, I'd have to check my wife, I think the last four seasons we've been playing with nine. I didn't like it as love as a parent, but all the parents wanted it. And so what we do for that is each kid sits out a game. So that's how it works out. Anyways, eight players. Um, questions? What if it's not an injury? You, personal, whatever, you want to pull a kid. You can't, then you just play with five. Yeah, I mean, if, if a kid has a bad attitude, or yeah, I, I mean, it's your son and he's uh, having a temper tantrum. Yeah, you want, you know, um, I, I think we, we can, your discretion, obviously if you're not doing it for an advantage schematically, you know, don't do that. Don't be weird, right? So, um, but if, if it's something where, you know, you, you'll make a call on that. I mean, we'll weigh in on this, and, and this has come up a little bit, is if I'm the coach and I feel like person A is not listening or not keeping his hands or her hands to himself or like breaking a team or whatever, like can you sit the player out like a player too? Yeah. But um, if your player, if you have eight players and one of them never comes to practice and all they do is show up to the games, you play them three out of four quarters. You don't get to decide who does what on a large scale. I could see like a player two, like, hey, you're gonna sit this one out or whatever. But when you start punishing kids or disciplining kids, um, that's, that's a slippery slope, especially when you don't know where the kid, uh, what his family dynamic is. You don't know why he's missing or she's missing practice. Um, you, really, you don't know anything except for one hour you're with that kid during the week, that's a, the best hour of his or her week. And, and that's how you need to approach it. So I would be real heavy on the praise. I would, I, I would always have a positive spin on things. Uh, and, I, and I would be really leery of trying to um, go that route of punishing players by them not getting to touch the ball. Well, he, did, he or she doesn't come to practice. Well, oh well, they still deserve the opportunity to touch the ball three or four times on a Friday night. Yeah, um, so, and not saying you were going that yeah, way. Not, yeah, not yeah. saying that, that you can't exercise some judgment, but big picture, you know, it's really, if they show up, they get to play. Um, substitution. Let's talk about the, Coach, real quick about how the math works on the subs. Let's do the math. <laughs> so let's pretend we all have players, uh, we all have eight players, um, and we've all labeled our players. Player one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. In quarter one, player number one and two will sit out. Okay, that means these players are playing. Quarter number two, these players sit out. And that way you always have six players playing and two players sitting. You see how that math works? Very good? Okay, good. Um, if you only have seven players, we'll get into that later, it's different. Um, but just know you can only sub at the quarter, and if you have eight players, everybody will play three out of four quarters, period. And real quick, if, if, if uh, Matt's son is maybe his, the, the quarterback, right? You probably want him in the fourth quarter, right? You're, you're all going to figure that out. The, the sub scene, uh, uh, subbing with your players, okay? So you, you want to make sure you sub the right guys at the perfect time. Here we go. Advantage, play advantage rule eight verse seven. Pay attention to this uh, so you get it. I think it's pretty clear. If one team has eight players and the other team has seven players, the coach with seven players must notify the referee prior to the start of the game that he only has seven players. The referee will then notify the eight player team coach who then has the option to identify which of the seven players must sit one quarter. The seven players team's coach will decide which quarter this player will sit. If this is not identified prior to the start of the game for whatever reason and later recognized during the game, the eight player team's coach can still identify the player that must sit. It is both the referee and the seven player team. Let's go the visual and then we'll role player. Are you cool with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's say you have seven players uh, on this given Friday night. One of your players is at Cotillion. Let's say. Okay. So then you've got player number seven. Let's call player number seven, six, five, four. You decide that player number seven will sit the first, player number six will sit the second, and five will sit, blah, blah, blah. So one player is sitting out every quarter. That means that six players are playing the whole time. Uh, or six players are in the game the whole time. So this is kind of an advantage because, like, if you have, you know, set, if you have seven players, your best player could stay in the whole game. You could have, in fact, 
players one, two, and three can play the whole game, and you can just rotate them out. So you will notice that, especially when you get toward the playoffs, more coaches are a little bit more um, liberal when it comes to like, no, 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 we played you guys earlier in the season. I want this player to have to sit out. They can only pick one player that you decide when to sit, and now, coach, we will roll. Okay, yeah. So, okay, beginning of the game. Beginning of the game, hey, I'm Paul. Coach, good to meet you, Coach Paul. Call me Paul. Paul, okay. We got a ref right here. Hey, ref. Hey, just want to let you know, I only have seven guys. I only have seven. Hey, Coach, um, he only has seven. And he's my assistant over here. Uh, should we should we sit out a player? Oh, you don't care? I don't care either. All right, cool. Boom. We all play the game. This coach can have his best player in the whole time. His best three players in the whole time. And that usually, nine times out of ten, coaches don't care. Don't care. All right, so now we'll go to the coaches who care. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. Hey, nice whistle. Yeah, thank you. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with all them cars? We're yeah. gonna win. What are you doing with that GoPro on your head? <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've got uh, I've got seven players tonight. Interesting. Okay, I want number twenty to sit in the third quarter. Oh, I want, I want number twenty to sit. Listen, you can pick number twenty, but. Bad pick. This other guy, real good. I scouted you. <laughs> so he picks the player, and I pick the quarter. Yep. So my best player, I can sit him in the first, the second, the third, or the fourth. It doesn't matter. But the other coach gets to choose which player that sits. Does that make sense? Hopefully that role play was. Uh, How about this one though? Third quarter. Oh, second oh, quarter. Okay. Half time. So we meet before the game. He's got the GoPro. He's got the card. He's got the whistle. I don't say anything. He didn't say anything. Hey, coach, nice to meet you. Hey, ref, on the Let's have a good game. Cool, cool, cool. We go over here, and then the game starts, and I notice that guy's got seven players. Yeah. And then my assistant says, "Hey, he's got seven. I go, "Not gonna say anything yet." We get to the third. We get to the end of the third quarter. Hey, ref, that number twenty, his best player, he's got to sit now because he didn't tell me before the game he only had seven. And I, uh, you can't do that. We already started the game. It doesn't matter. That we already started. I was like, that coach me. It's on YouTube. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> so at any moment. So if you're that guy with seven and they call you out, it's your fault for not saying it, for being weird, being shady, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. okay. So just know it happens. It happens. And some the refs screw that up. Yes. Hey, sir. Sorry. So I had uh, eight. The other team had eight. Our best player, or second best player, got injured. Our best player was on the bench with our least best player. So we sent in our best player in the fourth quarter, like, like five minutes ago. As soon as we started to play, they called timeout. The other coach said, no, 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 we want the other kid to come in. Was that an injury situation? It was an injury. He rolled nah, the nah, nah, coach is being weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my Gail Sayers had to go back to the bench, and my so, brother Piccolo So he thinks he thinks that you're not that And that's what we did. But yeah. he called time out. He said, no. Find somebody in a green thing. shirt. This is really good. Find somebody in a green shirt. They're neon green. Just like the, the, the staff members you saw here tonight. They're neon green. Find a field supervisor. Stop the game. Um, I want to see a field supervisor. Bring the field supervisor over. Explain the situation. Field supervisor would say, no, I think that's weird. You should let be whoever you want in the game. Yeah, we're in the game. Look at that. The white knight. What's up, bud? Here we go. So, uh, if you meet the beginning and you say, hey, I only have seven players, and the other coach, which, like you said, most of the times they're going to say no big deal. Yeah. If they say no big deal, they can't come back in the fourth quarter. There is no retroactive, no, 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 we're not, yeah. We're going to have this conversation above board before the game, sign here, everybody knows what's going on, and then later in the game, you don't get to do, do stuff like that. Okay, let's go page two. Page two. Timing. Games are played with 10-minute running quarters, 50-minute total, one-minute water break, in the quarters, five minute half time. Each time the ball is spotted, the team has 30 seconds to snap the ball. Teams may receive one warning for a delay of game, two timeouts per half. Uh, they don't carry over to the second half if unused, so you're not getting four in the second half, you don't use them. Uh, just two per half. If the score is tied at the end of 40 minutes, teams move directly into overtime except uh, K, obviously, and then one, two, and three, four. We only do overtime for five, six, seven, eight. Why okay. Is that? Why is that? Why is that? Yeah. 
Um, I think just a, a competitiveness, I think with the older guys, uh, we, we felt was more needed than to, to make it end up at the, uh, at the end of the season with wins loss. Um, I guess that's why. Huh? I guess that's why. Um, let's yeah. go to the overtime rules. And there's a super, we're going to come back to you. I got your back. Um, but we have super detailed overtime rules in there. And the reason why is because I want everybody to have them well in advance. You, none of you, I mean, very rarely will you go to overtime. But if you do, at least the rules are there. And the, here is it in a nutshell with overtime, OK? Each team gets the fo football. And, and my team starts right here. We always start at the 50-yard line in overtime. And after three plays, my team advances, let's say, to the five-yard line. The referee is going to put a marker on the five-yard line. Then Coach Mack's team is going to take the field. My team's going to be on defense. And he has three plays to get past the five-yard line. Gain more yards than I did. Okay? That's, that's how you win in overtime. Or you score a touchdown. But if my team scored a touchdown in three plays, how many plays does he have to score to win? Two. Two. Good job. Good job. Okay, we're going to come back to the question in the back. Yes, sir. Just on the timing piece, um, some of the field that's passing don't have lights. We had a couple games last season where we were the early game, and the referee shut the quarters, the quarters down to like eight minutes because they were worried about getting them in. Before you the wouldn't want to send a referee feedback form on that, but that's yeah. that's what I did. I just didn't know. Even if we get into that, we have to. We, we should. Let them know ahead of time. And nobody wants to be playing from 9 to 10 on a Friday. Mm -hmm. So, um, referee feedback form number one, and then number two, maybe say, hey, I know we started a little late, maybe let's just like not have a halftime today, you know, and try to do things so that the game, so the kids aren't penalized for, you know, and have less playing time. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Hey, what's up? Uh, one of the things about, uh, about the timing, the, the refs are not forcing a clock. I mean, and if we're trying to get the footballs to kids two times a half, and guys have taken 45 seconds to a minute to run a play. I mean, that's, that's impacting our ability to get first sure. Some referees are going to be better at the play clock than others, right? So if your referee was not good at the play clock, then you need to send a feedback form 24 hours after your game. Say, hey, you know what? I was at field one at Point City last night. This referee let this other team have 45 seconds every time, and it just slowed down the game, blah, blah, blah. And then that referee will get a phone call from us. Hey. On field one last night, you're letting play clocks go past 30 seconds. And in kindergarten, I get it if it goes to 35 seconds, but when we're like first and second and above, like it should be, we want them to referee kindergarten pretty much just the same as seventh and eighth, honestly. Even though in practice, we know that that really can't happen. But we want, we want to be as consistent as possible. It's frustrating too. I saw, uh, my son had a playoff game and, and the guy had an iPad. <laughs> And it, 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 I was going to lose my mind. Um, and so at halftime, I, I kind of went to the ref. I said, hey, man, because I started timing too. He's yeah. taking too long. And then he, he got on it. So, yeah. That's there. As a coach, go to the ref. Say, listen, I'm sure you did. You did, you did your due diligence. Um, and, and, and we're going to keep trying to improve on it. Are we good with overtime? Yeah, I feel good about overtime. If you want to read more about detailed overtime, I have scenarios here. If team one does this, team two does this, you know, you can read more about that. Scoring. Touchdowns are six points. You can go for a one-point conversion, and that's played from the five on the map of the field, or a two-point conversion, and that's from the 12-yard line. So if you go from the five, you have to pass. Pass only, though. And we'll get into the run pass on so, so that's clear. If you go for a two-point conversion, you could run or pass. Okay? So that's how you score. So we get to running here, and, and, and so everybody understands. The quarterback cannot run with the ball. So he catches a snap. Or she. He or she. I can't take off and run. I can't do that. I can scramble, but I can't pass line scrimmage. I can't go. Okay? Handoffs, laterals, and pitches are allowed as for NFL rules. All right? So you pitch it, you lateral it, you hand off. Run the football. No center sneaks. So you have to have an exchange. Gets down, boom, quarterback has to take it. Okay? You can't wrap around to the center. You can't do any of that foolishness. All right? Um, shotgun, under the T, that's what's accepted. Okay? But and you can't, like, you know, do it sideways or anything like that. We're doing our camp right now, and that's something we're emphasizing is, you know, uh, on Monday we start doing games, and guys are doing their own snaps. And no, 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 no. FNL rules, remember? Through the, through the legs, through the legs. We got we to gotta, uh, emphasize that. No running zones located approximately five yards from each end zone as marked 
and approximately five yards on each side of the midfield is marked, are designed to avoid short yardage power running situations. So let's talk about the no run zones. Right there. So you have to pass once you get there. You have to throw the football. So Coach Matt's team has the football, and they are inside of the no run zone, and they're going this way. They are in the no run zone, or otherwise known as the pass only zone, and they must pass the football. They cannot run the ball. However, if they are, let's say they advance past the first down and they end up right here, they are not in the no run zone or the pass only zone. They can run or pass, but once they get in here, they must throw the football. Can they hand it off to somebody or toss to somebody and then they throw the football? Absolutely. Yeah. That's so do. don't be fooled if in the no run zone, if there's a handoff, just know that the play has to end with a forward pass. The forward pass could be an inch or 20 yards, doesn't matter. The ball must go forward. One way people have kind of figured out how to do short passing in the no run zone is they go, we're gonna go a little rip fly. Here we go, down, set, hut. That's a forward pass. Yep. So you gotta be aware, you gotta be aware of that. That, that. That's a way people have started to realize, oh, I kind of can run the football. Um, it's not a direct handoff. Uh, it was a forward pass, but it still accomplishes the same. It doesn't have to be across line scrimmage. It does not. That's a good distinction. No. It can be a screen pass. It can be just what I did. Shovel. Where the shovel. That, that looks like a shovel. You know. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are we, are we allowed to um, like do play action? Absolutely. Okay. Every time. Okay. want. Okay. Say, in the in the in the pass yeah. Zone. Yeah, you do whatever you want. Let's say. Right. Mike Mars, Bill Belichick, do your thing. <laughs> so, hey, so why, why, why is that set up? It's guys like Matt who are trying to knock you out. We don't want that in FNL, okay? And those, those areas get smaller, you know, we don't want collisions down there. That, that, that helps with that, okay? Not saying it's doing right. uh, Yes, sir, yes, sir. Doesn't matter. Underhand, overhand, backward, it doesn't yep. matter as long as it's forward. Yeah. Sure. Yes, sir. I appreciate the clarification, sir. No, no run zone. That's only on your own side of the. the yeah, field. that's a good distinction. So yep. once we get past here, like you're technically in no a run zone, but like that's for the team going that way. Yeah. So we're only talking about if you're going that yes, way. Yes, sir. Well, what's going to to uh, center scene? Um, if I snap the football to Coach Mack, we don't have to play. Do it. We're like, good. Yeah. <laughs> then if, if, if I snapped it and then he handed the ball right back to me and then I ran. Yeah. yeah, old school. What about <coughs> Yep. Can you do center snap to the quarterback and like kind of like a fly sweep except to the center? Lateral movement. That's a lot of stuff going on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> center, center takes, I'm not center takes a movement happen. to the right and goes like that. As Rob, long as that dude, as long as that, that, that boy or girl snaps the football and then comes around and gets the football, I guess fine. All right. Center's right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think you and Matt just goes laterally. It's not a wrap around, but can you center move laterally for a handoff? Like yes. fly sweep. Yeah. Alright, cool. Sure. Because everyone's le everyone's legal. Like so that that's what's great about FNL. You get these little chubby kids who whoa, whoa, never whoa, get whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. They have uh, slow metabolism. Okay. <laughs> But who are always put on the O and D line, they get to catch a touchdown. That's what's great. Everyone goes out for passes. Okay, so everyone will touch the football. Everybody can be Jerry Rice or Dwayne Clark or whatever. Okay? Here we go. Um, the player who takes a handoff, lateral pitch, can throw the ball from behind the line of scrimmage. We're still on the uh, run zone deal. The player who receives right in the middle, uh, handoff lateral pitch, must throw the ball forward in the no run zone, cover that. Players who receive forward pass in the backfield then cross the line of scrimmage. Cover that. Once the ball has been handed off, lateral or pitch, all defensive players are eligible to rush. Okay, so let's 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 get that going. Coach, coach, what's your name, sir? Hoff. Hey Hoff, how are you? I love Coach Hoff. This guy's hey, a Hoff, beast. Hoff, back. All you do is stand up and stand look there. And just look tough. He does. All right. And then, Coach, you're going to have to really act, so you're going to stand up and look tough, too. Okay? It's not nice. It's not nice. And then, we're going to have Coach. Sun's out, guns out. And then, I'm talking about. Boom. boom. Here we go. Coach, I'm sorry. Look at this matchup right here. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we say zero time? This is. 
seven yard, this is the seven yard rush line, which is where if you're a rusher, you must be behind. Now these gentlemen are the defensive line and they're already facing this facing way. Which way which you want to turn around? Thank you very much. Okay. And so if I if I'm the quarterback and we go down, set, hut, that one can go. Can these players cross the line of scrimmage? No. Absolutely not. Now let's do it again. Can we go back there, coach? You're gonna get a lot of extra. Here we go. Down. <laughs> set hut. And then I hand off, and now what happens? Uh -oh. They can all go. <laughs> <laughs> they can all cross, okay? And so um, a common thing, one more time for your coach, is down, set, hut, fake handoff, and then we throw the ball. Notice these players did exactly what they should do, which is not cross line of scrimmage. This player still can come because that player was seven yards away when the ball was snapped. Coach you know? Pope, how about this? Come out here, Coach. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, I know you're Smoke, here. right? Okay. Here we go. Down, set, hut. Ball leaves my hand. Once the ball leaves my hand, you can go. So you can pick that then? If, once the ball leaves my hand. Now, if I pump fake and you cross, a good referee is going to give you a flag and give me a free play for me or whatever. But, so just be aware, ball leaves hand, you can cross. Go good. Ball <coughs> leaves my hand on a toss. Ball leaves, ball, I hand off, whatever. If the ball leaves my hand, anybody can cross. So you hey, can have guys can sit down. Nice job. You can have six guys on the line of scrimmage. Six boys, six girls. Doesn't matter. Six people. Yeah. So doesn't matter. Um, that's important. You also don't have to rush, which we'll talk about, because the referee is counting for seven seconds. So let's say you had a really fast player at quarterback, and you had that rusher coming. You could have ten, five, or excuse me, six rushers, and that quarterback, if that quarterback was super fast, could avoid them all for only seven seconds. Okay, so you don't have to rush anybody. The ball will have to leave the quarterback's hand in seven seconds, no matter what. Some teams find it positive to not rush. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they like to send a lot of people. It's really up to you. Whatever you want. Spinning is allowed, as is jumping, but no diving. You can't dive for the end zone and first downs and stuff like that. And that, that, that the, the ref is going to make a judgment call on that. Okay. Or you can dive for a flat. You can yes. dive for flag. Defensively, Absolutely. yes, you can dive for flag. But offensively, if the first down's right here, and I know I'm gonna get my flag pulled, I cannot just like go horizontal and say, oh, the ball is extended. The referee is gonna mark you down back here um, where you jumped or where you where you dove. Yes. And and the so that scenario, Coach Pub, he reaches out, but he pulls a flag. If if if, if I'm just reaching out, I'm not diving. Yep. So the, I'm going to be down where the flag is. Where the flag is. So even though I extended the ball and like we don't have that plane in the like NFL, my, my flag was pulled right here. It's not a first down. And you, so you're not going to say, well, the ball was over the goal line. Well, if you pulled them here, and that's that's another ref call. Sir. Sure. Re-emphasize down with the referees. We have one referee on 5th 17. He said it was notorious. You pull a flag behind the, the end zone, and it's a touchdown every time. Okay. okay. Home, it's a touchdown. Yeah. Not all the refs know this. No, no, no. Yeah. That's an area of growth for us then. Uh, you know, if you can, if you didn't shoot a record feedback form, um, shoot me an email and say, hey, at the coach meeting, we talked about this. Can you please remind the referees? And I'll, and we, have a, we have a ref meeting, and that, that's why it's important you guys bring these things up that, that happen, and we go over them with them. Can we go to that meeting? <laughs> <laughs> you will not get any calls. If you think you, think you get no calls out, You got it? Okay. Uh, let's go. We Ball is spotted. What's that? Just real quick. Yes. If the flags, if, if like I'm on a my goal line, like hold them by up to the Yeah, this coach up here had a really good question. Let's say that um, we got backed up and maybe we're on the one yard line and then like Coach Mack is the quarterback and I'm the I'm the receiver and coach you're gonna throw me a lateral and I'm in the end zone whenever you're ready, coach. Yeah. So I got the ball and then I get the ball and I start to shake and bake, okay? And then all of a sudden like my flag falls off. Or somebody pulls my flag and I'm in the end zone, it's going to be a safety. safety. And so the other team will get the ball and two points. That's another thing with refs, too, along with um, keep asking the score every quarter. Oh my Check God. the score, check the score, check the score. Every and Saturday, every hey. Saturday we get an email. The score is wrong. Every Saturday we get a, Well, what did you think the score was? I thought we won 21 to nothing. Well, the score was posted 21 14, the other team won. Well, that's not what I saw. It's like, hey man, you were there. Like, just clarify the score, like every quarter. And, and with that, say, hey, ref, flag check, flag check. Happen because they spin, they move around. Just, you know, and as a coach, make sure that they're checked. As a coach, say, hey, 21, hey, put your flags. 
The refs want that help too. Because what happens is you don't do that check on that one play, the guy takes it 50 yards, and it flags back here. Either it happened before or during the play. Um, that's something you can prevent. Yes? Are you going to have, like last year, you had a couple games, we had a couple games where you had like a, 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 men, a you had a rep. Training you, rep, like a real a train, rep and yeah. a training rep. Yeah. And unfortunately, the real rep, you know, half the time is kind of on the sidelines on his phone and pretty much gives the, you know, the new rep. Man, I kind of like liberty, and it was just real frustrating. Do you mind here? Oh, okay, all right. You go well, out so, the rep on his phone, of course. This is my favorite part about it. If, if I saw a rep on his phone. Well, he's, but he, he was kind of the. I, I'd have an issue. You know? yeah. yeah. This is my favorite part of the FNL coaching meetings, and, and I, I want to really just say thank you. Because uh, I love when we bring up like personal stories from games that happened last season. That's like my favorite part. Okay? <laughs> and so, I mean, the reality is with the, with the real reps, like they should be spending their time helping the, the newer reps get better, and like for them to be on their phone, like we don't like that. So that would be something like, hey coach, just a heads up, I know you guys are paying these reps, but this dude was on his phone for like 10 minutes during the game, and like we will talk to him. Cause, oh, yeah. Because like, that's, a, that's a seriously, if we're paying them to like train somebody, then that means like we're spending money on the, on the referee who's getting trained, and we're spending money on the referee who's supposed to be training, and that's not a smart allocation of resources. So that makes it happen this year, it could be two reps again. They're, I think what happened when he was on his ref, training timing, and... or doing timeouts, I think that's what happened. You know, like with, with my, with my <laughs> some referees will use their phone for the stopwatch, but if you felt like he was sitting there, like, you know, then that's different. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. sir. Um, where are the referees actually supposed to stand? Wherever they want, Wherever as long as they, they do a good job. Yeah. Uh, as long as they, they have a seven yard like indicator. Sometimes they use a, a sandbag. I, I, I noticed a lot of times that most of the times they didn't have a seven yard indicator. Well, they, they don't stand need behind it. me. They and then they stand, stand behind, behind the center, you know, in the defense, and then kind of obstruct. They're in the way. There's only one game we have the little orange marker, and all the rest of the games, the refs have to be on the field. There. I, mean, I know that, but if you at least stand somewhere yeah, else. Side, I bet if you asked them really nicely and you didn't wear your cutoff shirt and they weren't. <laughs> 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 I got a Montana State Wildcat shirt. Same. You asked them really nicely. You know, though, I, I, <laughs> some guys know, some guys cope. But they, it, it's like that's how they rest. They're going to they're gonna stand where they, where, they, where they feel comfortable. And all depends on if they're good or bad. And we haven't set a guideline for that because, you know, and I don't know if any of you, both of us have ref our, our share of games. Um, and so you get comfortable, you know, if one guy's on the sideline, I don't know how they see the other side. You know, those are things we go over. Like, you, we want them in the middle because that's where you can see it. But if you're in the but middle, you, you don't get in the middle. But you're in the way. You're, you're still in the way. Like, but you have to where you stand. Just two, just yeah, exactly. You have, to write the yeah. Orange you have your marker, your and that's two, two yeah. marker. Yeah. 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 But then he's right in the skinny that's motion area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bud? Any consideration that, you said that marker, seven yard marker is optional. Any consideration to make that a requirement? That's well, a here's the deal, you know, we hand those out, we, we, we spend money on those deals, and, and you're talking about um, some grown men that... Uh, Correct, but if those are requirement, you know, they have to have it. Okay, so they don't show up with it, we don't let them rep, and then what do we do? So, I'm, I'm telling you, I these are our problems, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, me repping games, uh, I, I just noticed in the games that we play sometimes, that they would be taken they would just mark it up, oh, right here, and then they'd move on, and, you know, the guy, a defender off on the right would cheat in, and before, you know, I mean, we were, we were getting cut in our time. I don't think that that's out of, out of balance for you to say that. If you can, that'd be another thing. Please shoot us an email after this, like, hey, okay. another thing to consider just with the referee, from my perspective, well, yeah, well, yeah. another thing to consider with the referee yeah. training is making, like, the cone or the disc more mandatory and emphasize that with referees, and we'll do that because we, we ideally want them to have them, but just in practice, like sometimes they forget them and, and we get them because we need them. But they're already terrible, but we need them. Yes, sir. Can a coach be called referee? Absolutely. But that's up, that's up to the referee. If the, coach, is, if the referee is like, hey, that coach interfered right there, uh, and there are some, some people who, who might do weird things. And, you know, you got guys that don't move well, you know what I mean? You know, they, they, they're not as. Here we Lead go. on their feet, you know. Uh, that can happen, but yeah, they can. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't happen. Um, let's go to the bottom. We're the last bullet there. Player running with the ball must make an effort to avoid intentionally running it over and initiating aggressive contact on the defensive player. Penalty if called is unsportsmanlike conduct, and this happens quite a bit. So, 
And I, I tell the rep and the coaches, like, I've seen this happen, and literally, I think nine times out of ten, guys aren't coordinated. They're not doing it on purpose. They're, they're like, ooh, you know, and, and they just run into guys. And then you get the moms, they're like, he's Or the dads, or the boys or the girls. Yeah, yeah. So you get, <laughs> you get people on the sideline that think there's, like, this over-aggressive play. And you can ask my wife, I'm, like, on the sideline on my own team, and, and I don't see that. I, I see an uncoordinated nine-year-old that stumbles and, and can't, he can't shake, you know? So, but the, the, here's the deal, the rep has to make that call. He has to think, okay, I thought he was being too aggressive, I thought he didn't try to move, he's gotta make that call. But I'm telling you, if, if you really look at your players, and you know, I analyze athletes all the time, I think it's an uncoordinated little kid who, who can't, he can't get out of the way. I don't think he's trying to put his shoulder down like Matt would do and truck a guy, you know what I mean? So that, 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 that's the deal. So just be kind of conscious of that. Um, I don't think what, what in our league, I, I haven't seen a lot of just bullies trying to, to Franco Harris, or, or I guess who's a better, Earl Campbell, a power back going through. I don't think that's the case. If they see that, but the refs make this call. I've seen this call over and over. It's the offensive guys. He needs to, or, she, or, or they need to, um, it, they need to try to juke the guy, the, the person with the flags, okay? Um, that's a deal. Everybody good? Okay. We, we would prefer if referees over legislated and called everything. We prefer if they call every bump, every foul, everything. <coughs> the reality is, if that happens, like, we get a call saying, this referee didn't let us play. So that, like, on our end, we want to cover ourselves and always make sure that if there's any contact, it's a penalty. Um, and then the reality is when the game happens, <coughs> If you call a penalty every time, like the game doesn't, there's no uh, and, and on the flip side of that, when I rep games, I, 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 you know, I think I do a decent job, but I've had the coaches uh, complain about stuff. I'm like, I just let them play it, because half the time, I'm not gonna call ticky tack stuff that I don't think is like roughing or pass interference. It's like, just play. You know, that, that's how I look at it. And I'll say this too, as a coach, and you all are gonna coach, is like, the one, this is a great message. And I say this to my high school guys, I said it to him when he's high school, if we're blaming the game on the ref, that's a problem, okay? So instill that in their head that, hey, we should have scored the touchdown. In the third quarter, we should have made that pull. Always put it back on you. If you're blaming, and, and when the, the, the kids will feel that. Oh, if the ref didn't, and my little son, I don't know if he's still here, when he loses, he blames everybody. Everybody, you know, and, and my deal with him is always, well, you know, and I'll get real with him. Hey, I remember this play. I remember this play. Maybe you should blame yourself. You know what I mean? So always have that mentality as a coach that we didn't lose because of the refs. If we did, the game was too close. Is he still here? Is he still here? We're not, I don't want to tell that story. Marcus, Marcus, is your brother still here? No, he's gone. Eli? Eli. Eli, love? Eli. No, we don't want him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> anyway, I'll let it go. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Eli, yeah, yes. Uh, only because I didn't see it here, maybe in, in the future. Is there any, any kind of leap blocking? Oh, no. no. Zero blocking. No. And, and what you do to, uh, you know, when I coached it, I said, like, you run a run play. So do you want guys to stand there? Okay. No. Girls, <laughs> players. I just say run streaks. And inevitably, they're gonna kinda get in people's way. Accidentally, you know what I mean? That's, that's how I always handle that. So um, there are no fly, there's no block. All right, here we go. Receiving, all players are eligible to receive a pass, including the QB, if the ball's been handed off lateral or pitched behind the line scrimmage, scrimmage as per NFL rules. As in the NFL, only one player is allowed in the motion at a time. A player must have at least one foot in bounds when making a reception. Everybody good? Passing the QB has a seven second clock. Coach talked about that. If the QB does not get rid of the ball within seven seconds, the play is dead, loss of down. Once the ball is handed off, the seven second rule is no longer in effect. So obviously, if you want to, uh, you find one good, that's your best player, I would do this. Say, huh? and I'd pitch to that guy. Let him run or pass. That's, that, that's the name of the game right there, okay? Shovel passes are allowed, interceptions may be returned. Dead balls, we're, 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 everybody there? Let's go, let's go. The ball must be snapped between the legs, not on the <coughs> side. The play is ruled dead when the ball carrier's flag is pulled. The ball carrier steps out of bounds. A touchdown or safety score. 
The ball carrier's knee hits the ground. The ball carrier's flag falls off. The ball carrier's flags are not positioned on the side of the hips, slide to the back side of the tailbone. This is very subjective and up to the referee to determine the severity of the issue. Warnings may be given instead of dead ball call. It is the coaches and players' responsibility to check their flag correctly. I talked about that. There are no fumbles, therefore, no stripping of the ball. The ball is spotted where the ball hits the ground. So, you know, this goes against football rule, uh, you know, how you coach. There's no stripping, there's no fumbles. The guy runs, he drops it, it's dead. Okay? Yes, sir. Both kids go up and they're trying to get the, get the pass. It's so incomplete then if it drops to the ground. If somebody, if somebody comes up and they're both going up for it, though, the tie, tie goes to the offense on, on dual I think you say you strip it then before it Oh, the play, yeah, yeah. yeah. Play football, yeah. Okay. Knock it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rushing the quarterback, all players who rush the QB must be a minimum of seven yard from line scrimmage. We're going to have those marked out for you. As marked by the ref, when the ball snapped, any number of players can rush the QB. Players not rushing the QB may defend the line of scrimmage. We cover that. Once the ball is handed off, the seven-yard rule, uh, yard rule no longer is in effect. All defenders may go behind the line of scrimmage. A special marker or the referee will designate the seven yards. Remember, no blocking, tackling, or stripping. Sportsmanship and roughing. It's our favorite part. If the field official referee or commissioner witnesses any act of tackling, elbowing, cheap shots, blocking, or any other, other sportsman, unsportsmanlike act, the game will be stopped and the player, coach, or fan may be ejected from the game. The penalty, if called, is a dead ball at point of the infraction and an automatic first down. If the penalty is against the offense, then 10 yards plus a loss of down from original line of scrimmage, it is always the benefit of the other team. Foul play will not be tolerated. Trash talking is not for me. Officials have the right to determine offensive, offensive language. Trash talk is talk that may be offensive to officials, opposing players, teams, or spectators. If trash talking occurs, the referee may, be given, uh, may give one warning, and if it continues, the players, coaches, and or fans will be subject to ejection from the field and the premises. The game will not continue until the ejected party has left the premises. If they do not leave, the referee will forfeit the game immediately and award the win to the opposing team. Anyone ejected from a game, player, coach, or fan, for any reason, will not be allowed on the premises for the next game. If they are ejected a second time during the season, they will not be allowed on the premises for the next two games and are subject to dismissal from the league with no refund. Unsportsmanlike conduct by anyone will not be tolerated. Okay, uh, let's say, you know, we've had a lot of some scenarios with that. But some things that you just want to do. Don't, don't have interaction with the opposing coach. Unless it's positive. Unless it's positive. Don't just, you know, there's no reason. Um, I saw this last season. We played a team, and the other fans were just loud, uh, exuberant, excited, emotional, and it started to bug our fans. And I kept saying, what are they, they're having fun. But it bugged them. It bugged some of our moms. No offense, moms, they're like, what's wrong with them? They're, they're like so into it. <laughs> and I was, I'm, I'm objective, they're getting excited. I, I thought it was cool. Um, it was, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, not the mom, but the team. And the coach, guys, the coach was really into it, okay? He had, he had the gear on of his team. Uh, their team came down. Together in unison. Um, what's wrong? I don't care if they do that. That's all good, you know. Uh, by the way, they still got beat. <laughs> we, we came back and beat them. So, you know, but then I, and then I was like to the mom, I'm like, hey, how are you feeling now? You know, they're all happy at the end, you know. But so, a couple things with that. It, it, don't get offended by that stuff, okay? And, and there's always going to be a parent that's loud. And, you know, we had, my, my first couple of years, we had a parent, he was on our team, I thought he was a little, he was a little obnoxious. Every time his kid would uh, uh, take a run, he'd do it, this big, loud cheer. Woo! Every time, this big, every time this guy would make a run. It's a little annoying, you know, but he's excited for his kid. I, I you know, what are you going to do? You can't woo, you know? Um, so, as a coach, though, these are things you can control. If you're chirping to the rep, then what happens? Your wife, 
the other mom, Grandma. the other dad, the <laughs> uncle, they start chirping. That doesn't help it, things at all. Okay? You get some bad calls, it's okay, fellas. Overcome it. I, I, hey, Paul, I think he was a great example. Our first year coaching together, uh, our offense uh, struggled a couple times. You know what his response was? Okay, we could go play more defense. <laughs> Two turnovers in a row. Okay, hey, we could go play more defense. That's what he'd say. He's our defense coordinator. That's, that's a positive way to handle it, right? Adversity. How do you handle adversity? How do you handle things when they're not going your way? So um, you, we rely on you guys to take control of that. Get your players under. Don't have your players, like, ever saying things to refs. Uh, that, that, I, I, I hate that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's when the coaches get a little chippy with each other. That's when it starts. And they do. Okay? Um, they do. So, uh, what happens is, um, you know, it's going to come to some emails. Then, coach and I, we're going to have a discussion. And then he's going to say, Coach Mack, you, you, you're going to have to make that phone call. I'm going to call you up. And then we're going to have to have an uncomfortable, somewhat uncomfortable. Uh, conversation. We don't want any of that. Man. I just want to high five it. Not 99% of the time, everybody does a great job. So we're not going to tolerate that stuff, though, man. You know, it, it, the league's too big. I don't want to be on the news. You see some of these leagues have these crazy fights and stuff like that. Um, we've had guys kicked out of kindergarten. They don't take score in kindergarten. Our, our kindergarten. There's no, there's no rankings or none of that. So could you imagine that, that you're getting a phone call because you're acting inappropriately in the 3 4 today? So uh, check your egos all the time. And then you guys help out with your parents, with the uncles, all those, all those shenanigans on the side. Um, what else? It. I mean, we, we didn't start this league to be um, suspending adults and having, no. and having, like, Don't want that. And having conversations with people um, they, like after you have a conversation, like I feel like this person's an adult. And we just had like a conversation. It was just so weird um, because like they acted like a kid, you know. Um, and but you know, I've been a high school teacher for five years. Coach Max been a high school teacher for like twenty something years. Um, we we can have those conversations. It's just not why we do this. Um, but we, it is absolutely up to our discretion. Whatever we want to do, uh, if we see if we see something we don't like, we will we will do whatever we want. And what happens is the, the coaches, this is what it comes to us, is like the coaches have their version. And I, I told the last group, I'm an English teacher. I, I read a lot of essays. Some of you guys think you're like novel writers and, and things like that. The longest emails I've ever seen. I mean, it, it, it's like, whoa, you know, every, in the third quarter, on the second play, they did this, he said this. I'm like, oh my gosh, shoot me in the face. But, but it's like, but we, we're gonna, I'm going to look through every, every we're going we're gonna to read every email, we're going to go through it. And then your parents are going to chime in. Well, this is what I saw. This is, and it's like, ding, 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 ding. And the whole thing is, we're having this conversation because people are acting inappropriately. That's all the fact of it. And it starts with the, the coaches. But our league is great because of you guys. Uh, and then there's a small percentage that, that kind of mess it up. So we'll keep talking about it. Um, you get a lot of emails that remind you to keep it fun. Remind, fun. You, remind you to use nice, uh, use, use nice words with friends. Um, hands yourself. If you don't have something nice, don't say it at all. Um, you'll, get, you'll get those reminders um, because you, you guys, you know, over time we've learned. But we've had like, I want to say almost 20,000 kids play FNL now in Carlsbad. And it's like the volume of idiots is so low. So like yeah. the, the amount of great people and great kids and great coaches, uh, it's, it's just, it's just far outweighs. Challenging someone, let's see you in the parking lot for five football. <laughs> Man, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a, you know. You know, I'll see you in the parking lot. You want to go settle this? You, you, don't, you, you just don't want that, guys. You don't want that. You, you do such an incredible job. Um, and, and we want to continue that. And we want to, we want to uh, make sure that you, that you have a great experience as well. And guys are going to, um, here, here, little things. If somebody shows up in full gear and they got flags and, and someone else shows up in flip-flops and as far as the coaching, you know, you're still, you're still coaching those same eight kids. Um, some guys get into it a little more than others, all right? And more power to them, okay? Uh, let's go penalties. All penalties can be declined. Defense, 
Uh, the offsides, that's a five yards, automatic first down. Pass interference, 10 yards, automatic first down. Illegal contact, that's holding, blocking, etc. 10 yards, automatic first down. Illegal flag pull, before the receiver has the ball, 10 yards, automatic first down. Illegal rushing, so they start the rush from inside the seven yard marker, like coach was talking about, or they leave early. Um, 10 yards, automatic first down. Last man standing. Uh, last defender tackles the ball carrier instead of pulling the flag or intentionally pulls the flag early to prevent a TD. That's an automatic touchdown and potential unsportsmanlike penalty or ejection from the game. So he's running for a touchdown and he gets tackled or, you know. Yeah, you're, 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 it's clear the player's gonna score and somebody tackles the player. Uh, that's the most common way somebody will get awarded a touchdown. Offense, illegal motion, uh, false starts, illegal forward pass, that's a pass thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. So line of scrimmage here, he passes it by a foot, he throws it, that's illegal. Uh, offensive pass interference, he pushes, illegal pick play, those are hard to, hard to uh, call. And, and, and who, who feels like they got illegal pick plays uh, that, that have gone against them? You know, it, it's gonna happen. It really happens. Guys, watch, watch the Patriots. Watch um, the Cardinals. You know, pick plays are common. Okay, so it's going to happen. Um, I, I, I run them at Carlson High School, you know. We're going to do the, 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 the they work. They're, it's good stuff. So, um, <laughs> you, you just, is, the ref can call it, though, is my point. If he thinks it's a pick play, he can call it. The gray area is what I was talking about earlier. Was your guy going out for a pass or was he picking? It's, it's hard. And if you don't know what a pick play is, think of it like this. A player who's not, who doesn't have the football is intentionally getting in the way of a defender who's defending somebody who is getting the football. It's like a, a moving screen in basketball or something like that. Like, so if you're not following the terminology, just think like somebody getting in the way of a defender. Yes, sir. I have a defensive question. Um, what I noticed last season was some of the teams that were really aggressive Defenders would kind of wrap the player up, not a full on tap on the come down, grab the flag, so they'd be physically in the way. That runner could not proceed forward without running over. So he's he's trying to run, and instead of getting the flag, he's like grabbing on him. Well, he's well, directly in front of him, and that deep, that rusher has to either stop to avoid contact or run laterally. That's actually, As opposed to pulling the flag on the side, so that's that way. Yeah, so the nature of the rules puts the onus on the offensive player to move. So the defensive player is entitled to his or her space. And it forces the offensive player to kind of have to navigate that. Right. So um, they can stop it physically and then use that time. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. You're going to see, like, the higher level players, like, they put the onus on the offensive player. Okay. They get right in front of them, and I'm going to pull both your flags, and they make them make them work. So the rush of the common interference on the defense. What no, but if the referee felt, if the referee felt like there was like, as the player is in front, maybe the player was grabbing like jersey, shorts, and flag, and belt, like that may be like holding or some sort of penalty like that. That's pretty subjective, but yes. Are you saying a player has the ball or doesn't have the ball? I'm saying if the offensive player has the ball, is running at a defensive player. A defensive player you know, maybe has a corner on the sideline. Yeah, the and defensive player is entitled to his or space. You know, That's when they'll call that offensive uh, charging, charging or whatever. Illegal, no illegal yeah. reference. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you clarify um, the flag guarding on a pass? Because we had it called against us once, and then on the other team, it was called a different way. A kid catches a ball eight yards down the field, turns flag guards when he's got the ball. Ball goes back to the line of scrimmage, okay. minus 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. No, so it always goes back to the line of scrimmage. Always, and, and that, we now had it called the opposite about. one time not when we were on defense. Yeah, yeah, that'd be something. If that happened, and I didn't know the now. rule, and I should have asked, but I just yeah. knew it was called two different is, ways. The question is, um, Coach Mack makes a great run, runs all the way down, he's about to score a touchdown, and right as he's about to get in the end zone, flag guarding, then scores a touchdown, the referee says, penalty, I know you're about to score, but we assess penalties from the line of scrimmage, so we're taking you all the way back there, and we're going 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. So that's a really big penalty, <laughs> that, the flag guarding, <coughs> because it goes from the line of scrimmage. Uh, another thing about the flags, if your player catches the ball and only has one flag, that player is down right there. Yep. Uh, you cannot catch the ball with one flag and then run. You are automatically down right there. You don't have to be touched. 
nothing. If you're running a route and you catch the ball in the end zone and you have one flag or no flags, both of them magically fell off. You, it's a touchdown if you catch the ball in the end zone. But if you catch the ball in the one yard line, you're down right there. You cannot advance with only one flag or less. Does that make sense? Flag pulling is super objective too. Um, you know, when I rep, I, I have the other coach saying, that's flag guarding, flag guarding. To me, he was just running. Okay, because naturally, this is your form right here. All right, so it's going to happen. You're going to get called for it, and it's going to be against you, and it's, it's going to go both ways. All right, so very objective by the ref. I think that's a hard one. I really do. Sir, so, in the red shirt. Yes. I just want to point out, I think that there should be a point of emphasis in your referee meeting, because like, I, well, I flag guarding? Two different ways. Where okay. Yeah, please yeah. shoot us an email on that because we're just putting together a list of things that like from season 12 to season 13 we can get better on with our referees because we feel like they're getting better, but like you said and like a couple of you mentioned, there are some things that we, need to, we, we can do a better job. It's a really brutal call, so when it ends up being like a yeah. 40 yard penalty, yeah. like, they don't want to call a 40 yard penalty, but if you see it called two different ways. Yeah, you know. please take like, the, take like 30 seconds, shoot us an email later. No worries. Delay of the game, we talked about that. Referees determine the incidental contact that may result in no run play. All penalties will be assessed from the line of scrimmage. Last page, we're, we're, we're doing well. Uh, only the team captain may ask, for re may ask referee questions about a rule clarification, clarification and interceptions. Players cannot question judgment calls. Games cannot uh, end on a defensive penalty unless the offense declines it. Standings. Official league standings and playoff seedings are determined based on the following. Win-loss, winning percentage. Head-to-head -head versus those teams. Average points allowed per game. That's allowed per, so your defensive, not how many you score, how many you allow. Coin toss uh, will be the fourth. Uh, note, for playoffs, all first place teams get top seeds, then rule above is applied. Okay. Um, attire. Cleats are allowed except for air metal spikes. Inspection will be made. All players must wear protective mouthpiece. There are no exceptions. They have to have that mouthpiece in. Official NFL team jerseys and NFL flags must be wor worn during play. Flags must be a different color than the shorts. Shorts must be a solid color. No stripes or pockets are allowed on the shorts. FNL commissioners and or referees will determine if there are any uniform violations. Any violation of an entire rule should be rectified ASAP. If violation continues, the head coach is subject to a one-game suspension and the game is subject to forfeit as determined by the NFL. Note there are no kickoffs and blocking, and no blocking is allowed. Coaches coach, players play, reps, ref, fans cheer. Attire, let me just talk about that real quick. It's, it's, that, that, I'm, I'm more of a sticker, I think, than Coach Pub is on that. I don't want to see stripes at all. I don't want to see pockets. Of course, pockets are safety. Stripes to me, uh, it, it is the flag, the ideal with the flag, but one thing I think that I want our league to separate <coughs> from other leagues is we're going to look good. Look good, feel good, play good, be on Sanders. But So, hey, we're going to give you nice jerseys. The NF, the, the FNL shorts, you don't, have to, you don't have to get those. I think they, what's good about them is they match the jerseys perfectly. But if you go to Big Five or Dicks or something and you just get all solid black shorts, I'm good with that. Totally good with that. You do not have to get FNL shorts. Get, everybody go to Target, Walmart, Dicks, get the same shorts. <coughs> Whatever. Totally fine. But I see later in the year, Johnny left his shorts, Johnny did this. And we got a team that everyone's in black, and we got two guys in maroon and purple. That bothers me. I, I, I just don't like that. I want everyone to look good, okay? And the stripes and the different variations. And my kids have done the same thing, and, you know, um, I'm not happy about it. So uh, we want them to be uniform. Yes? What do you do for what do you do if you're the coach and your kid shows up for a game and he's got stripes on his shorts? Yeah, I mean, uh, the pockets, the ref can, can make a determination on that. The stripes, you know, we're not crazy. We're going to let it go. Uh, but you just, you know. Um, so the ref could make the kids sit? On the pockets? I, I mean, I don't think they have. We're, we're not going to do that. But you guys get the point. <clears throat> That's a safety deal. And, and if somebody forgets their jersey and they show up to the game and they don't have one, they're not allowed to play unless they're in an FNL jersey. Yeah. So that means that everybody's swapping out jerseys right. so that there's only players on the field with jerseys. You're not allowed to play yeah, that. Sure. Not, and then you can start to get questions from people like, is this player even registered in the league? Yeah. And then, you know, now we're checking our email folders and checking pull up the rosters. And now we're asking the coach, you know, what the name, you know, like, don't do that. Um, 
And if you lose a jersey, which happens, you just contact Millie, and, and you pay like 30, 40 bucks or something, and that's your that's your penalty for losing your jersey. Like, that's the deal. Uh, and Millie handles all that. Yes, sir. Real quick, don't the jerseys have to be tucked in? Yes. Absolutely. And if, okay. if and if you, and like remind your players all the time, jerseys, shirts tucked in, flags on your side. Shirts tucked in, flags on your side. We want our referees to say that about 10 times a game. We want our coaches to say that about five times a game. Remind your players, shirts tucked in, flags on your side, because if you're running and your shirt's untucked, and that referee thinks that you that was purposeful, you are down right when you got the ball. Yes, sir. Hey, is it possible for us to try as coaches to get uh, colors that are not the same as the jersey. So if we have red flags, we wear black shorts. I can tell you with dust, it's really hard to see red flags on black shorts. Or yellow flag on white shorts. We can get yellow and black. Or I think that's a little much, my friend. I'm just going to be honest with you. You can't get colors on shorts. You have to get the red flags on the So the, uh, <laughs> we do do that, but we say where we draw the line is if you have red or orange shorts, you can't have red flags. No, I understand. I'm just saying, try yeah. to get something. This, this was, I, I would say you just do this. When you get your team color, yeah. and if you don't like the flag, swap them. Yeah. You, can, you only have two options, right? So, uh, yeah. I would agree. I'm just saying. It's yeah, yeah. I would do that. Be mindful of that because it's really hard. Yeah. If you get a dust game, yeah, guys, just hard be mindful, mindful of that. And if you want to swap them, we, we, we're pretty Wait, good. Well, I know we're losing people. I know we're going to leave in four minutes, but we're losing people. Let's focus up for three and a half minutes. It's going to be okay. Um, when you, if you, once you get your jersey, your team roster, and you know what team you are, you're gonna know like, oh, we're Florida State. Um, we want to have black shorts. We're gonna go black shorts. Let's say you went gold shorts, but you have yellow flags here tonight. When you go to the sponsor night, when you turn in your money and you pick up your jerseys, say, hey, I want to swap out some flags. Um, we ordered gold shorts. I have yellow flags. Here's some gold flags back, and I have some red ones, and we will just. Swap it out, no big deal at all. So the flags you get tonight are not necessarily the flags you're gonna have in the season, because you may elect to get red shorts or gold shorts, and we don't want you to have yellow flags and yellow shorts, and you can just swap them out uh, at the sponsor night, which is August 9th, August 16th, August, Millie, August 19th, August 16th. Thank you, Millie. Hey, Dr. Cohen. Just real quick, the fan of not being weird, and you guys felt not being weird. Yep. Can you do that with the refs? Seriously, <laughs> man. I mean, the, the weird attitude and the power trip sometimes that they come to the field with. Like, yeah. I mean, there's been a couple of them, like, really nice. Shoot us an email. I know. Add you flag your email. I will. I will. For sure. All right. All right. We're, at, we're about two minutes, 45 seconds. Uh, just so you guys know, we're going to stop at 745. And anybody who has any questions, we will talk. First thing. We will talk to you forever. And, and tomorrow, remember, Thursday night is a coach's clinic. So start at 545. So we're going to keep it going. We are almost done, and we are done. We will tell you we're done. But about two and a half minutes from now. Yes, sir, the back. A forward pass behind the line of scrimmage. Can you pass again? No. Only one forward pass Good per play. Question. One forward pass per play could be in a line, back behind the line of scrimmage or in front. doesn't matter. Yes, sir. For the sake of no contact. Um, when they're rushing the passer, are they supposed to deflect, go for the ball, or go for the play? Oh, good question. Really good question. We would love the goal, no contact, right? So if that ball leaves the quarterback's hand, and that person is like six inches in front and knocks the ball down and doesn't hit the quarterback, <coughs> the play is fine. But if that person hit, knocks the ball out of the quarterback's hand and hits the arm, that should be a penalty. So coach can pull the flag. Yeah. Coach pull the flag. If you, coach can pull the flag. Because I got into a little bit with a coach 